In a classic case of now you see me, now you don't, the National Assembly has discovered non-existent projects in a 2020 budget proposed by the National Inland Waterways Agency. And is funding education now becoming a challenge as state governments are being accused of providing inadequate funding for state universities? This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. The National Assembly has discovered non-existent projects in the 2020 budget proposed by the National Inland Waterways Agency. It was further discovered that over 4 billion naira had been appropriated for these items between 2017 and 2019. The alleged fraud was discovered during the budget defense session held for the Federal Ministry of Transportation and NIWA by the House Committee on Inland Waterways. Joining me to discuss this are two gentlemen. I'll start with Lue Legbe. Thank you very much Sorry, for joining you. us. You. And of course, we have Mayowa Ido, political analyst, both of you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having us. Pardon. <laughs> <laughs> We're back again. It's phrased differently. Mm. But <clears throat> how did such a thing got missed in previous years? Because it's, it's showed that it was there the year before. Where did those monies go? Yeah, I think it's one of these many-headed problems that we have, right? Because when all this part, I mean, with all, pretty much all the budgets we've had in Nigeria have had these sorts of elements of, in some nature, right? But it wasn't until, I think, the budget of, was it 2016 or 2017, where this became a big thing, where padding became um, part of the Nigerian lexicon. And the good thing about that was that it, it brought some public awareness to that part of the budgetary process. And I think people that were doing those things were, if, even if they didn't stop, at least they were a bit more careful in terms of how they did such things. From my understanding, it used to be quite brazen at one point. Um, but we, I think we shouldn't be, we shouldn't have the illusion that just because this thing has been blown wide open, or it was blown wide open a few years ago, it means it's going to actually stop. It won't stop. People will just be a bit more clever with how they do it. And, but they, they still don't how... seem to be clever because this was discovered. The question well, I'm asking again mm -hmm. is, how did all the previous committees miss this huge amount of money? Well, it's not like, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> it's not like they just took an amount and just put it there. They actually put... Um, they actually put a purpose behind it. It's in having the conversations about what exactly is this supposed to be for. Non-existent from what the committee is saying. Yeah, but on the uh, if you look at the line items, it's not going to say non-existent. <laughs> well, what's it's, your it's take going on to, this? It's going to actually be attached to something. It's only when you do a deeper dive into it that you see that, no, this is not it's really not attached to anything, but it just means you need to look a bit more closely. I'm still going to take that question to you. How did we miss this over and over again, as it seems? I think it's just people not doing their jobs. Because the reason why it's been discovered was because someone thought, you know what, let's scrutinize everything that's on this budget. And it's in the course of that that, you know, you find out that, oh, this things don't exist. So what probably happened was in previous years, it was just, you know, I mean, we know the way the National Assembly works sometimes. They do not scrutinize these things. So I think what we should be happy about is that, you know, someone decided to do their job for once and they were able to figure this out and um, take the necessary action. The, the committee says they're going to investigate this. Um, you rightly noted that this is not a new occurrence. It's just that people chose to do their job. Do you see them following through? Do you expect a report on this particular case? Um, the thing, to answer that question, I'm actually not sure because we've, this is not the first time where you know headlines are made of certain things happening, but then you don't get to, you don't, in terms of the transparency, you don't get to see the end report. So it's but like, this is a new set of um, National Assembly members. This is a new team coming on board and they're, you know, climbing on the... That's, um, that's debatable. Because, I, 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 so when you, say, when you say it's a new set, well, new in the, 
Okay, let me put nice it this assembly. Way. We had yeah. eight assembly. Even if you have yeah, some, of, I know them, you're thinking that the ones that returned. It's not not just that the ones that returned, mm -hmm. the ones that may, were maybe former governors, former House of Reps members who won seats. So when you talking about new in the context of doing things differently would mean people that haven't been involved in certain aspects of that budgetary process, whether it's at the state level or whatever it is. But some but, of the people, not to interrupt you, some of mm -hmm. the people that are here mm -hmm. um, getting the real leadership position for, um, I mean, for a change this mm -hmm. time around, we have new leadership in that house. Even if they've been part of the system, which is a good thing. They know what not to do. Yeah, so but the, is it possible the, that they're changing their no, mind No, but the, now? The, the problem is that the system on its own is flawed. Right, so it, it unless you have um, unless you have very principled people going in there, you're going to have the same because somebody comes in there and say wants to do things a certain way. There's a way that they there's a way that certain conversations would go, which is this is how it works here. This is how we do things here. So it's one of two things: either the person. State sticks to his principles and says, no, I don't do things that way. Or you just go with the flow and just carry on doing um, whatever, how, do it the way it's been done. Because the reality is, even if someone is trying to do something different, the system has become so, I don't, want, I don't know the right word to so use. So you're basically so saying up. you don't see a report from no, any investigation. No, because all the ones that have happened, where's the report on those That's ones? That's what I'm Nothing, saying. This is a not, new team. So why and do we think you'll be that different? They are going to, it, shouldn't we, shouldn't we, they've not given us any antecedent okay. to build on. Okay. So that's my we? point. Well, that's my point. Because you're going to, see, half the problem in Nigeria is a lack of consequences, to be honest. Because things keep repeating themselves because there are no consequences for bad behavior in Nigeria. So budget padding has been going on since forever in Nigeria. The, when, the, when it became a big story four years ago or three years ago, whenever it was, Yes, it was a big headline and all that, but what became, what came out of it? Was that, were there consequences for people that actually padded those budgets? I think one or two people lost their jobs, but beyond that, nothing happened. So I wouldn't, I, not to be the pessimist, but because there were no real consequences for that, I fully expected that it was gonna happen again. Okay, and that, let's, that's, I think that's half the problem in Nigeria, to be honest. Okay, well, we'll try and look for solutions, <laughs> as hard as it may yeah, be, no, agree, because the, the entire point of this program is to yeah. have conversation about these issues Absolutely. and proffer the right way we should be doing things. Okay. This is not... Um, the question of budget and budget proposal, you said, is not new. It's something that we've had for a long time. And these uh, MDAs have been presenting budgets year on year. How is it that they, they still present budgets that... Probably they just there are some that have been rejected currently, some that have been asked to go back and change certain things. What is wrong? This is something that these MDs do, MDAs do every year. So shouldn't they be preparing? Shouldn't they be long-term plans? Like, okay, we're planning towards the or is it rush once the budget is presented, they rush to put things together. What is wrong? How can we solve it? Um to be honest, I think the answer is kind of in the question in that how much long-term planning can you really account for in terms of are these things that thought out? And then another thing is because I think a lot of times we're used to, you know, it's like when you want to do rule to the answer. So maybe before exam period now, um, <coughs> you just start rushing it. So it's like now, like I can imagine like the MDAs could, it's the type of thing where it's budget season, you know, they know they need X amount, but they don't, like, <coughs> the, in terms of the itemization, it's probably not accurate, but you know, it's like, okay, we can put X for this, we can put X for that. When we get the money, we'll do what we're gonna do. So um, I think, it, as he said, I think it's because there's been a lack of consequence. So um, a big show is made of it, but there are no consequences, so people can keep doing the same things and hoping and trusting they won't get caught or there will be no consequence. Your take on that? Yeah, I think for me, it's, I don't know, so it's, we've had this, so this isn't like, I think like we've, we've both said, it's not a new issue. So I'm not, the, the reality is that until we get to a point where 
um, ministries know that anything they submit to the Senate will be scrutinized, will be checked and double checked and triple checked. This is going to keep happening. I'm, I mean, I'm happy that this has come out because at least it shows that um, the more, more than two eyes are on these, are, are on, are well, at, at least we're on those particular ones. But to be fair to the Senate as well, I think when, to, I mean, to your point, when um, the ministries go to the Senate to defend their budget, I don't think the Senate asking them to go back to review certain things is an indication that the ministry didn't do its job. Because in, the, the job of the Senate is to actually look at those budgets and approve or disapprove of certain things. So there are things the ministries might say that we want to use one billion to do X, Y, Z, and the Senate looks at it and says, no, that's too much, or no, we don't think you need this. So those conversations, in my opinion, are good because it shows there's an engagement in, the, you're not just, they're not just rubber stamping whatever the ministry is saying. There's actually conversations going on about, is this wasteful? Is this a good use of resources? Those sorts of, and that's the job of the Senate. So I think it's a good thing that they're asking them those questions and asking them to go back and review certain things isn't necessarily a bad thing. But where, like you said, where you just have some ministries just putting in anything because, and the only reason they will do that is because they don't think it will be given that much scrutiny. Because if you really believe that these guys are going to scrutinize what you're submitting, you'll be a bit more careful with what you're actually submitting to them. So, aside the scrutiny, what mm. do you think, in your opinion, the mm. Knight Assembly can do differently to engender confidence because you don't seem to have that confidence in them right now because of antecedents. So are they doing it right in your opinion, at least with this budget? Well, with this, this, maybe not with the entire budget, but with that particular section of the, well, that particular ministry or that particular item of the budget, yes. But I wish, what I hope to see is something like that replicated across the board in terms of budget. Scrutinizing it and asking those questions that why do you need this or looking at it with three, four, six, ten eyes, nine eyes, and being able to um, spot any padding, any things that don't make any sense. So when you say when when you say ministries are defending their budget, they should actually defend every single thing there. Because even if it's in the scheme of things, even if you say ten million naira for tissue paper, for example, that that's just a rough example. Somebody should be able to say, does that actually make sense? But I suspect that when you see something like that, because it's a paltry amount of money in the scheme of things, those kinds of things would probably slip under the radar. But my point is, if, we're, if, we, if we are going to make any headway, then we should be able to, the, the Senate anyway, should be able to scrutinize these, um, these item, line items in the budget, be able to say, okay, this is this, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense. And where the Senate thinks it doesn't make sense, they should be able to push back on the ministries or the minister and say, why do you need this? Why do you need X amount for this? Why do, why do you need to spend money on this? And the ministry should be able to defend it. If they can defend it in a way that makes sense, that's fine. If they can't, then they have to go back and, and review it or remove it completely. That's the job of the Senate. That's what this entire budget process is supposed to be about. And I would hope that's what they start doing going forward. Mayowa, do you envisage a time when budgets will be presented? And we won't be talking about um, if, um, padding of the budget. We'll be looking at, like he was highlighting, you know, issues, amounts, what you're using for what, what are the projects, are they real, are they fake? Do you envisage a time when the process will be strictly that and no more go back and re redo your broad, uh, proposal? Um. I mean, obviously, it's something we can all dream about. We can all look forward to. Is but, there a time? But I'm like, how likely is it? How likely is it possible? I don't think so because I think, again, with as with these things, you also have to make room for what I'll call Nigerian factor. So, you know, there are processes and the way they're supposed to work, but you also have to make room for that 15%, 20% Nigerian factor where things that really shouldn't be things rear their heads. So I think it's just, it's, it's a dream. Like, and maybe one day we'll get there. What's your assessment of the way the Knight Assembly now? He's talked about, you know, what he sees. But what is your assessment of the way they've handled this budgetary uh, process? The, the president has presented and they're beginning to scrutinize it so far. Are um, they doing well? 
in your opinion? I mean, I guess you have to give them credit for, you know, how smoothly the process has gone in terms of, for once, we might probably see a situation where the budget will actually run from January to December as opposed to, what, you know, because normally it's usually done later than this. So, first of all, you have to give credit to the president for submitting his budget in good time. You have to give credit to the assembly for, you know, scrutinizing it now and making the necessary checks. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll have to give them credit for that. Will they yeah. meet the deadline with the pace at which they're going? Um, I hope so. Like you said, they've started it early enough, so they should. I would, I would hope they do. Um, I mean, there are times when we're talking about a particular year's budget in June or in July, in the middle of the year. So for this to have started in October of the previous year, I think it makes... It, it's, a, it's a good thing. I hope that means they can actually make the deadline. But then again, making the deadline means that the they back and forth is reduced. So there isn't that much back and forth. And the only way that happens is if the ministries have submitted things that make sense in the first place. So, and if the Senate is doing its job properly, then they should be able to ask those questions. Even if it's going to push against the deadline, it's better they do that properly than to hit January or February and then we start finding out things like this, which um, doesn't help anybody. For the ordinary man on the street who doesn't quite get it, the conversation about making sure the uh, budgetary cycle is from January to December, why is this and what will be the economic benefit, like the benefit of this budgetary cycle um, to the economic well-being of this country? Okay. Um, you know how I remember a couple of years ago when I don't know who it was was saying you know when the government releases when the budget is approved and the government releases money things move. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when the government releases money for infrastructure for the ministries and for them to get their projects going. I think it creates like a ripple effect where the money it goes from one hand to one hand. So I think um, in terms of just even for the speed at which you want business to grow and for an economy that's been a bit shaky, I think obviously the budget getting approved and working in due time will help the system. Yeah. Do you, do you have something to add to that? No, I agree with that because um, it distorts the system where you have um, 2020 budget being approved in June 2020, for example, it causes so many disruptions and distortions in the economy because if you have, I mean, 2020 budget is meant to go January to December. So like you said, the government releases money for certain things, whether it's, um, if you think about the number of infrastructure projects that are ongoing at the moment, if that money is released on time, then those things last throughout, um, well, I'm sure they're in tranches, but it, it it's, um, I don't know what the word is, it goes on throughout the year rather than um, you have a project that is planned to start January 2020 and as at February or March or April, we still don't know when the funds for that project is going to start. So already you've, you've pushed out the deadline for completion of that project and this thing, like you said, it has a ripple effect on everything else. So if we can get to that point where we know that January to December is when this um, is when the the cycle is. Everything else that is planned for that period, that it, I mean, it's, it, a lot of it is about planning as well. Because if you can if you can plan that January to December time, then you can almost accurately predict where certain milestones are going to be over the course of the year. But where you don't, where you are not even sure when when it's going to happen. Is it going to happen in June? Is it going to even happen in August of the following year? Then it just it just messes all sorts of things up in the economy. Uh, to go back to the newer situation, do you see them coming back with an explanation that will vindicate them from you know the that that project that the money was you know budgeted for was uh, bogus? Um, again, because I don't know the specifics, because it's one side saying. This is bogus. So, I mean, you would expect, you would grant Noah the right of fair hearing to explain why and how that was a thing, and then for the what, um, the National Assembly to then make a decision. 
So I don't think any government agency can just get away with saying, with making bogus, like, um, for something like this, where you submitted, you've, there's a line item that no one can point to, no one knows exists. Um, I don't think any government agency can just get away with just throwing it under the rug. I think they have to what, investigate you, it. Um, Lulu, do you think there's an honest explanation why the Senate doesn't seem, uh, the National Assembly members do, do not seem to, you know, find where this project is and money was budgeted for it, it was collected? Well, I think without, the, the issue is we probably wouldn't know how the Senate came to that conclusion. Because I would imagine that they are not just reading it and saying, no, this doesn't exist. There are certain things they would have seen to be able to say, no, this doesn't make sense. This does not exist. But at the same time, if um, Niwa has put it there, I would imagine that they have some sort of story behind it, which, again, that then becomes a conversation between Niwa or the Ministry of Transport and the Senate. So. Is it, um, is it honest? I honestly don't know. But I want to believe that the Senate would not make, would not just say this doesn't exist just by reading it. They will, that would be based on certain information that I'm sure that they have. And um, like you said, NIWA should have the opportunity to defend that and say, well, it does exist because X, Y, Z, or um, no, it doesn't exist. And then that then becomes, that then becomes a criminal issue at that point. What do you expect to see at the end of this uh, exercise, scrutinizing? Do you see an increment in the budgetary proposal by the National Assembly, as we've seen in some cases in the past, or maybe a reduction in the total amount that the president is asking for? Um, I would expect a reduction, because I think it's clear the government is broke. <laughs> and. Um, I think with the way things are going, I think the government, number one, first of all, have to be seen to be cutting down their spending. And um, I would think the Senate will be able to hold them to that little bit of account to, you know, check things a little bit. Yeah, thoughts. So can yeah, no, I agree, I agree with that. I think the the... We have, uh, I don't know if it's a revenue shortfall or two or high costs, a combination of both. But either way, it just means the government right now doesn't have money. That's what it boils down to, and which is why we're seeing Many Nigerians will not agree with you that no. the government does not have money. They well, don't look like they don't have money, at least the officials. Well, the, the government is broke. <laughs> that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's the reality. Uh, Nigeria as a country is broke. Oh, that's, that's the, I'll that's take the your reality. Word for it. Well, <laughs> you don't you have to. Much. It's everywhere. We, 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 know, we know this. We, I mean, the country is broke. That's the, and they're trying to raise revenue. But I think, I mean, when, 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 you have, when you have financial issues, it's one of two things. You raise revenue or you reduce cost or you do both. And we seem to keep going after revenue in Nigeria. But how do we raise more revenue? But we don't seem that concerned with reducing cost. And I think that, for me, is an issue. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thanks very much. All right, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, funding tertiary institutions, especially state universities, how are we doing? Subventions are being cut. This and more when we come back. Stay with us.